Welcome back to lecture six. So today we continue our discussion on diversity. Uh, this is what we did last time. So we talk about uh, how to do diversity combining from a maximum likelihood perspective. Since we use maximum likelihood, that means we're doing the optimal detection. And here optimal means in terms of the symbol error rate or the error probability. So no other detector can beat this. And we've seen that after combining, we obtain a so-called sufficient statistic, which we denoted here by Z, which is obtained by multiplying the observations across all the diversity branches with the complex conjugate of the channel coefficients and summing. Um, this is a scalar observation, and we can compute the SNR of the scalar observation. This gives the output SNR being the sum of the input SNRs. And so far, we haven't used the statistics of the channels, so this is independent of the channel statistics. So we haven't used the fact that channels are independent or not. So now we will, um, what we will do now is we will study this the distribution of this. So what are the statistics of this? And then this of course depends then on the statistics of each of the individual channels, of each of the individual diversity branches. Good, so maximum likelihood estimation, maximum likelihood detection, in this case is also known as maximal ratio combining or MRC. And the idea is that you weigh each of the branches with the complex conjugate of the channel. So that's what we did when we created this observation. Z is B Hermitian Y, which is equal to sum I from one to M, B I star Y I, and this is a complex number. And this means that channels which are better, so which have a larger amplitude, will have a higher weight in this summation. So you trust better channels more in a way. Another way to interpret this is by uh, saying that we're actually doing co-phasing. So we're aligning the phases of all the observations. So a way to see this is if we write out uh, yi, which is beta i, I don't know what the, the transmission was x or was S, S plus noise, and let's forget about the noise for now. Whoop. Then when we um, multiply with bi star, right, then we get bi squared, and this is now a real number. And then by summing over all i, we sum over all i, we're summing a bunch of real numbers. And this means that we were kind of aligning these vectors in the complex plane, so each individually each of these beta i's are pointing in different directions, but then when we're multiplying with the complex conjugate, we obtain vectors that are in the real, on the real axis. Okay, so we're bringing all of these to the real axis, and this is known as co-phasing. Okay, and in addition to co-phasing, we multiply, of course, each of the diversity branches with the amplitude. If we do that, then the output SNR is the sum of the input SNRs, independent of the statistics, but now, um, since the input SNRs are random, right, for instance, due to really fading, that means that the output SNR will also be random. And so this has a distribution. And the distribution of this output SNR depends on the distribution of all of the input SNRs. And now a reasonable assumption is, for instance, that we have really fading, where each of these input SNRs has the same distribution. Yeah. So the same probability density function. Now, under really fading, each of these um, input SNRs is an exponential random variable, and you can show that the sum of M IID, so independent and identically distributed exponential random variables, is a so-called chi-squared uh, random variable, or equivalent a gamma distribution. And there exists a closed form expression of this distribution, is given by this. So this is the distribution of the output SNR after maximum ratio combining, and this is the cumulative density function of this output SNR. Now, given this distribution, this has a certain mean and a certain variance, and you can compute this in closed form. So the mean of this uh, output SNR is m times the mean of the input SNR. So each of the diversity branches has a is random uh, SNR, 
with a certain mean, and this mean is gamma bar, and then the output SNR has a mean of m times the input SNR. So this means that the more branches we have, the more power we collect, and this is called array gain. And this comes from a multi-antenna terminology where you have multiple antennas and you receive the same signal on all of the antennas, each with their own independent channel. So that's why you, you can combine all of these antennas together using um, this co-phasing and adding, every, adding everything up. You have observation Z. And this leads to a much higher SNR than looking at only one antenna separately. You can also compute the variance of this output SNR, and this variance turns out to be m times gamma bar squared. Okay. And what we will do now is we will divide the SNR per branch by m. And this is motivated by the following case. Uh, suppose that, for instance, you're sending the same thing m times, right? So we had this, for instance, this time diversity, and we sent our data here one time, and then here another time, and here another time where the time in between is larger than the coherence time of the channel. Now, the more times we transmit it, the more power that we're spending. So if we're sending it m times, then we're using the power, we're using m times the power. If we don't want to do that, so we keep a fixed power, right? And we're sending m times, that implies that the power per transmission is proportional to 1 over m. Right? More transmissions means less power per transmission. And that's, that's what we are trying to do here. So if we divide the SNR per branch by m, so the more branches we have, the less power per branch we use, but the total SNR remains the same, then the mean SNR will be gamma bar. So this is the mean of the output SNR. And the variance of the output SNR will be gamma bar over m. And you find this by um, well, dividing this by 1 over m, and then you get this number. And, and from here you divide by 1 over m squared, right? because you divide the SNR by m. Good, so this means that when we have many branches, the, the mean is always the same and the variance reduces. So it becomes more and more concentrated around the mean. And this is called diversity gain. So this is the fact that the channel looks more like an additive white Gaussian noise channel. Uh, you, you can recall that for an additive white Gaussian noise channel, the mean of the SNR is fixed and the variance is zero. Right? There, there is no distribution of SNR, it's only one value. Now, given this distribution of the output SNR, we can compute our standard performance metrics such as outage probability and average error probability. And this is what we'll do in the next few slides. So before we do that, let's first look at this distribution. What does this look like? This probability density function and cumulative density function. So this is what we're doing here. We're looking at the output distribution, right? the output SNR distribution. So this is the distribution of this, well, it's actually written here, distribution of this sum SNR. And as an example, we take the SNR per branch as one. Okay, just a simple case. And we have the two cases. The first case on the left is when we, where the total power is proportional with M. So this means that the more branches we have, the more power we're transmitting. And case B is that the total power is constant. So the, the, the power per branch goes down with m. These are the two cases. So now first on the left side, where the total power grows with m, we have first uh, on the x-axis the SNR, and on the y-axis we have the density of the SNR. The first case corresponds to m equal to 1. This means that we have no diversity, we just have a single branch, and this is standard Rayleigh fading. So this is actually an exponential distribution. When we have two branches, we have a distribution as here in blue, three in red, and uh, 10 branches gives the distribution this uh, green bluish color. What we see is that we have, when we have more branches, the mean of this density shifts to the right. 
So for m equal to 1, the mean will be 1. For m equal to 2, the mean will be 2. m equal to 3, the mean will turn out to be 3. And for m equal to 10, the mean will be 10. And the shifting of the mean is known as array gain. Now on the right, we have the other scenario where the total power is constant. Or this means the here power, oh, power per branch is constant on the left. On the right, power per branch is proportional to 1 over m. Okay. So on the x-axis, again, signal-to-noise ratio. On the y-axis, distribution of the signal-to-noise ratio. And here now, gamma bar, which is the per branch SNR, is 1 over m. So when m is equal to 1, we have this dark blue curve, and that's exactly the same as we have here on the left side. But when m increases, the distribution will become more concentrated, but the mean is always 1. Okay, so they all have the same mean. equal to gamma bar equal to 1. Well, no, not equal to gamma bar, equal to 1. But we see that when m becomes large, the distribution becomes more concentrated. So what happens when m tends to infinity on the case on the right? What would the distribution look like? When m tends to infinity, you will have a distribution that is just a peak, a delta function around 1. So m equal to plus infinity is a delta distribution. And then you have basically an additive wide Gaussian noise channel. Right, where your z is s plus n. Good, let's uh, take a quick break now.